الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد We continue reading about Al-A'adhar Al-Mubiha Lil-Fitri Fi Nahari Ramadan Al-A'adhar Al-Mubiha Lil-Fitri Fi Nahari Ramadan The legislative excuses That would allow a person To break the fast in the daytime uh, Of Ramadan And they mention Al-Rabi' The fourth excuse Al-Hamlu wa Rida' Al-Hamlu wa Rida' Al-Hamlu is pregnancy And al Rida' is breastfeeding Nursing So the fourth excuse is these two affairs If a person, if a woman is pregnant Or nursing If a woman is pregnant Or nursing So they say فَالْمَرْأَةُ إِذَا كَانَتْ حَامِلًا أَوْ مُرْضِعًا وَخَافَتْ عَلَى نَفْسِهَا أَوْ وَلَدِيهَا بِسَبَبِ السَّوْمِ جَازَ لَهَا الْفِطْرِ that the woman, if she is pregnant or breastfeeding, and she is afraid for, her, for herself, meaning afraid for her health, meaning that if she's fasting, it will, she's afraid it will harm her, or, uh, or her child, and because of the fast, then it's permissible for her to break the fast. Then it's permissible for her to break the fast. The woman, if she is pregnant, or if she's breastfeeding, and she's afraid for her own health or for the health of the, her child because of fasting, then it's allowed for her to break her, to break her fast. It's allowed for her to break her fast. And ijaza, meaning it's permissible. So we see here a point that one should note that this is in the case of a woman who's pregnant or breastfeeding and she's afraid for her health. She's afraid for her health or for the health of her child along with her health or for the health of the child alone without her own health. And these are the three states that it would be in. But the point to make now is that uh, the excuse here is the woman who's pregnant while fearing for her health or fearing for the health of the child or for both of them, not simply being pregnant. So being pregnant is not an excuse to break the fast. Bring, being pregnant is not an excuse to break the fast. Likewise, breastfeeding. It's not an excuse to break the fast, any alone. The point is that if a woman, she's pregnant and she's afraid that fasting will harm her or harm her child while she's pregnant, now this is an excuse to break the fast. Likewise, the woman who is breastfeeding, she's breastfeeding, she's afraid that fasting would harm her and it make the, the milk less or weaken her to the extent that she doesn't have, she, 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 that it would harm her and the likes or that it would harm the child uh, as well because of de a deficiency in the nourishment so on and so forth now with this fear it's allowed for her to break the fast some women they'll be pregnant and it does not harm her, harm her nor her child and she will fast easily she will fast easily likewise uh, some women they will breastfeed and breastfeeding them does not harm them or bother them and they'll be able to fast uh, easily, normally, in this manner. But if one of them were to fear for their health, now it's allowed for them to break the fast. Or to fear, to fear for the health of their child, likewise, it's allowed for them uh, to break the fast. The people of not, as I mentioned, about the, the, the woman who is pregnant or, or breastfeeding, if they fear for their health, then uh, it's allowed for them to break their fast and they must make that day up. And Ibn Qudama al-Maqdisi rahimahullahu ta'ala He mentioned a consensus about this And likewise in Nawawi rahimahullahu ta'ala He as well mentioned that he did not know any difference of opinion about that The woman who is afraid for herself her, Afraid for her own health And if she's pregnant and she were to fast She's afraid it would harm her Or she's breastfeeding and she were to fast She's afraid it would harm her And in both of them uh, Ibn Qudama al-Maqdisi is from the the, from the Hanbali scholars and, and Nawawi he's from the Shafi'i scholars both of them have mentioned in this case here that they know no difference of opinion that it's allowed for her to break her fast and she must make it up and she must make it up and Nawawi rahimahullah he added also if she were to be afraid of herself and her child together and he, so long as she's fearing for her own health 
whether she fears for her own health alone or for her own health and the health of the child together, this is what is incumbent upon her. And these two noble scholars mentioned that no, no difference of opinion about that, that she's allowed to break her fast and she must make those days up. And she must make those, the, those days up. Ibn Qudayma, rahimahullah ta'ala, he's known uh, to be from those scholars to uh, look in, in, into the details of the statements of the people of knowledge and those who have proceeded and to be well aware of the differences of opinions and he'll mention them in his work at Bughni. He mentioned and he, uh, about this uh, affair that he says uh, We don't know any difference of opinion about this any from the people from the people of knowledge. So this is, a, this is one affair here. This is one I fear here. So they mention here, لم لما رواه أنس رضي الله عنه أنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله وضع أن أن المسافر شطر الصلاة والصوم والحبلاء والمرضى الصوم. And they mentioned uh, that the evidence for this is that which is narrated by Anas رضي الله عنه that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he said that verily Allah he has removed from the traveler half of the prayer. And he has removed the obligation from the traveler, half of the prayer and fasting. And from the pregnant woman and the breastfeeding woman, fasting. Fasting. In Allah wa and al musafir shatra as salat was That verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has removed the obligation uh, of half of the prayer and the fasting from the from the traveler. From the traveler and also from the pregnant woman and the nursing woman removed from them the, fa the obligation of fasting. The obligation of fasting. This narration here, the Prophet Sallallahu clarified that with regards to the traveler that Allah he has removed from them the, the obligation of half of the prayer. What is intended here? The arubaiyah, the, the prayers that have four, four units, meaning the dhuhr and the asr and uh, the, the, uh, the Isha, the Isha, that Allah has taken half of the obligation off, meaning that they will suffice with two while traveling. Was Wassam. Was Wassam. Also, he has removed the obligation from the traveler of, of fasting. But we took a principle in our previous class, which is a great principle with regards to fasting. What was that? The, and the one who breaks his fast... What is the principle with regard to the one who breaks his fast because of a legislated excuse? <laughs> Everybody, every individual who broke his fast because of a legislative excuse, whenever that excuse is removed, it's incumbent. It's an obligation for him to make up, to make up that fast. So there's a consensus uh, about this uh, specifically here with regards to the traveler. Also mentioned here previously about uh, the breastfeeding woman and the pregnant woman. But here what, what we know from the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned, فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَامٍ أُخَرٍ That whoever amongst you is traveling, whoever amongst you is sick or traveling, then he will break his fast and he will make them up from days outside of Ramadan. So the meaning of this narration that Allah, He removed the obligation of fasting from the traveler, meaning He removed the obligation of fasting, ada'an, ada'an, the obligation to perform the fast in, 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 that, in that time, and the obligation of performing the fast of Ramadan in the daytime of Ramadan, and while He's traveling in that day, that obligation is removed from Him, but the obligation to make up that, to make up that day remains. The obligation to make up that day remains. You need the, that, that's what's understood from here. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed the obligation of fasting from the traveler, meaning performing the fast while he's traveling. And whenever he's not traveling, after Ramadan, he must make up that day. He must make up that day. And likewise, Allah, he removed the obligation of fasting from the pregnant woman and the nursing woman also from the obligation of, of fasting. Of fasting. Meaning that whenever the pregnancy is finished and whenever the, the nursing is finished, they must make up those days. The Messenger وسلم, put them in the same context as the traveler. So just as Allah removed the obligation from the traveler, but he must make up those days outside of Ramadan when traveling is over. Likewise, Allah Azza wa Jal, he removed the obligation from the pregnant woman and from the nursing woman 
while they're pregnant and while they're nursing, and they must make those days up outside of Ramadan after the pregnancy is finished, and likewise, the nursing is complete. The nursing is complete. So uh, this is the case. So they say, so they mention now that uh, the hamil, the, the pregnant woman, and the murdir, which is the nursing woman, that, uh, that they will make up those days that they missed. And they will make up those days that they broke their fast in the daytime of Ramadan. And uh, this is the case if they were afraid for their own health. They were afraid for their, their own health. Now they mention that if the woman who is pregnant were to be afraid along with that uh, for, her, for her child and for the fetus uh, and also the, preg the pregnant, uh, the, the, the nursing woman for the one she is nursing, then they will feed as well as making up those days for every day. Uh, a poor person. And they mentioned this is based upon the statement of Ibn Abbas and radiallahu anhuma, that the nursing woman and the pregnant woman, if they are afraid uh, for their child, they will break their fast and they will feed. And on behalf of, of those days, on behalf of those days. And this is one of the, the positions of the people of knowledge. Uh, and Allah knows best uh, the situation of the woman, uh, of these women is different. Either they will fear for their own self or fear for their own self and their child. And in that case, uh, what has proceeded uh, from the consensus mentioned by Ibn Qudama uh, and the Nawawi, rahimahumullah, is, is that they will make up that day only. Is that they will make up that day only. They will not feed. Is that they, they will make up that day only. If, she's, if the pregnant woman or the nursing woman is, is afraid for her own health, then uh, she will break her fast and make up that day only. Or if she's afraid for her health and the child along with herself, so long as she fears for her own health, whether that's alone or with the child, she will, she will break her fast and she will make that day up. She will make that day up. This is what has been mentioned uh, by Ibn Qudama and, and Noah and other than them from, from the people of knowledge. And then there's the case where the woman, she will not fear for her own health. She will not fear for her own health. She's not afraid for her own health, rather she's afraid for the child in the womb or she's afraid for the nursing child that, uh, that, that, that the child will be harmed by fasting. Not herself, not herself. In this case, uh, so, uh, some of the people of knowledge have mentioned that uh, she will break her fast and she will make up that day and feed, and feed on behalf of, of that child. She will, she will break her fast and feed as well, and they, as they're mentioning here, but there's some details there. But Allah knows best what Sheikh Ibn Baz and Sheikh Uthaymin uh, and other than them, Rahimahum Allah, have mentioned with regards to this and likewise from the fatwa of the uh, Al-Ajna Al-Daima is that the situation is the same. And that whatever the case may be, the woman who broke her fast, the, the pregnant woman or the nursing woman who broke her fast in the daytime of Ramadan, the only thing that's incumbent upon her to do is make up that day. Is to make up that day. Feeding will not suffice in the alone is to make up that day. Shaykh Sulaiman al Ruhayri, he mentioned it's better to make up the day and to feed, and he just in case. And if she did that, that's ahwat. And there's differences of opinion in this issue. But as I mentioned, any the fatwa of the Board of Major Scholars, and likewise of Shaykh Ibn Baz and Shaykh Uthaymin, Rahimahumullah, and other than them, uh, uh, rather the majority of the people of knowledge is that they will only make up that day. That they will only. They will only make up that day, and Allah, and Allah knows best. So they mention فَتَلَخَّصَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ أَنَّ الْأَسْبَابَ الْمُبِيحَةَ لِلْفِطْرِ أَرْبَعَةَ السَّفَرُ وَالْمَرَضُ وَالْحَيْضُ وَالنِّفَاسُ وَالْخَوْفُ مِنَ الْحَلَاكِ كَمَا فِي الْحَامِرِ وَالْمُرْضِعِ So now it's summarized, and from that which has preceded, that the reasons that allow a person to break their fast in the daytime of Ramadan, therefore, the first one is traveling, the second one is a sickness, and the third one is uh, menses or postnatal bleeding, and the fourth one is that one will be afraid uh, of being extremely harmed. And as is in the case of the pregnant woman 
and, uh, and the nursing woman, as is in the case of the pregnant woman and, and the nursing woman. With regards to the sickness, there was a question that, uh, that had come, uh, and we've seen that the sickness is two types, uh, sickness that one uh, generally is expecting for it to go away, and the cure will come after uh, some time, and this is what is known from this type of disease. And the ruling for this person here is that they will break their fast and they must wait until they are healed and uh, they are cured and then make up that day and make up that day. And this is the only thing that will suffice them. And this is the, this is the only obligation that will suffice them. The one who has a sickness in this manner that is expected to go away, even if it's mentioned after some time, but still it's expected to go away. They must wait. They must break their, they will break their fast during that sickness and then they will wait until they are cured and make up that day by fasting that day outside of the days of, of Ramadan. This is one case. The second case was the case of the one who had a sickness that is terminal or that is not expected to go away. And it's not expected and he has a sickness that prohibits him from fasting and it's not expected to ever go away. And this is what is known. And he, according to the people uh, 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 of, medic, uh, of medicine and the life scientists, the doctors, so this person is not expected that he would ever have the ability to fast. This is the one that's allowed for him to break his fast and he will feed on behalf of those days. These, these issues have proceeded. But the question was about a, a person who had a reoccurring sickness. A person who had a reoccurring sickness and a sickness that comes and goes. So the issue here is, is this reoccurring sickness and it will come and it will go. So there will be times whenever the sickness is present and they will not be able to fast and then there will be times when the sickness is not present and they will they will be able to fast so therefore this this person it's incumbent upon them to wait until the time comes when they're not sick and they're able to fast and make up those days so long as a person has the ability to fast or, or is expected to have the ability to fast it's not allowed for him to feed it's not allowed for him to feed maybe a person he he any yeah, this person here the sickness will come and he will miss days from Ramadan and then it will go. And outside of Ramadan, whenever it's gone, the sickness is gone, he will make up one or two days. And then if the sickness comes back, then he will wait. And then if, it, if for example, because the question says it's a reoccurring sickness. So I'm, I'm picturing the issue like this, that it comes and it goes and it comes and it goes. So of course, whenever it comes, they will not fast. But whenever it goes, they will fast. And if it's difficult, likewise, any for the woman, who is breastfeeding or, and has a number of days to make up or the woman who is pregnant has a number of days to make up or someone who is sick, they have a number of days to wake up. Alhamdulillah, the legislation is easy. Whenever they make up those days, they don't have to make them all up back to back. They can make them up one day a week or one day a month or two or three. They can finish them all together or they can separate them in any manner that's easy for them. And likewise, they could delay, delay them they could delay them to the winter time when the days are shorter and uh, the, the, the weather is, uh, is calmer and the heat is lighter and the lights like this when it's cool outside and easier to fast shorter days and, and, and more uh, better weather and the lights like this, all of this is allowed. All of this is allowed. And so the ease is there, alhamdulillah, but the obligation remains upon those who have the ability. And at one time they were unable to fast and they had a legislative excuse and then later, that excuse is removed. Now it's incumbent upon them to make up those days. Now it's incumbent, an obligation upon them to make up those days and feeding will not, will not, will not remove that obligation and Allah, and Allah knows best. After this, they mention Al-Masala Thaniya. Mufatirat As-Sa'im. Al-Masala Thaniya. The second issue, Mufatirat As-Sa'im. The Mufatirat. The Mufatirat is the plural of Mufatir. المفطرات هي الأمور التي إذا فعلها الصائم بطل سيامه بطل سيامه The مفطرات they are things that if a fasting person were to perform them then they will invalidate his fast they will invalidate his fast and so this is the terminology that the people of knowledge they, 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 they use they call them مفطرات what are they مفسدات ومبطلات السيام مفسدات السيام ومبطلات السيام the things that will corrupt and invalidate the fast of a fasting person and before uh, entering this chapter or this portion, and yes, it should be known that there's uh, the people of knowledge, they say, La fitra illa bi fi'lin maqsood. La fitra illa bi fi'lin maqsood. That the fast is not broken except with an action that is intended. And a person, he will do it intentionally. 
a person who will do it intentionally. And that he will perform one of these actions intentionally. This will break his fast. If he did it without knowing or unintentionally, one of these affairs occurred that we will discuss inshallah, it will not break his fast. It will not break his fast and Allah knows best. And it has come in the hadith of Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu, which is a great principle uh, in, in this chapter, the chapter of fasting, and specifically with the muf- uh, Mufatirat, that he said that, that the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man dhara'ahu al-qay, fala shay alayhi. That the one who was overcome by vomit, then there's nothing upon him. Yani, meaning he will complete his fast, and it doesn't break his fast. The one who vomited, yani, unintentionally. And uh, that which is in his stomach came out of his mouth, and he had no intention to do that. He was overcome by vomit. This will not uh, invalidate his fast. La shay alayhi. And he meaning he doesn't have to break his fast, and his, meaning he doesn't have to uh, make up that day, and his fast is good. His fast is good. But then he said, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَمَنْ اسْتَقَاءَ فَلْيَقْضِي But whoever threw up intentionally, then let him break his fast. And in one wording likewise, وَمَنْ اسْتَقَاءَ عَمْدًا and whoever made himself throw up on purpose, then فَلْيَقْضِي Then he has to make up that day. Then he has to make up that day. So this is the evidence for this principle here. What is the principle? لَا فِطْرَ إِلَّا بِفَيْلٍ مَقْسُودٍ لَا فِطْرَ إِلَّا بِفَيْلٍ مَقْسُودٍ There is no, the fast is not broken. The fast is not invalidated. Except by an action that is intended. Except by an intended action. And a person who performed the action intentionally. So here we have the narration, the Prophet Sallallahu he mentioned the one that's overcome by throwing up. He's overcome by vomit. It doesn't break his fast. But the one who vomits on purpose, the one who makes himself throw up intentionally, this breaks his fast. So whenever there was no intention there and the action occurred, it didn't break the fast. But whenever there was an intention there and, and, it, and a person, he did it himself intentionally, it broke the fast. So this is a principle here. So as we're reading the chapter, then you will keep this in mind. That uh, these are the affairs that invalidate the fast, but that's only whenever there is an intention to do that. An intention, an intention to do that. So they say, مُفَطِّرَاتِ الصَّائِمِ وَهِيَ الْأَشْيَاءَ الَّتِي تُفْسِدُ عَلَى الصَّائِمِ سَوْمَهُ وَتُفَطِّرُهُ They say that these المُفَطِّرَاتِ uh, they are the things that corrupt the fasting person's fast, and they invalidate his fast. And they invalidate his fast. وَيُفْطِرُ الصَّائِمُ بِفِعْلِ أَحَدِ الْأُمُورِ التَّالِيَةِ And uh, the fasting person, he, his fast is broken by one, of the, by one of the following affairs. By one of the following affairs. الأول, the first one, الأكل والشرب عمداً. الأكل والشرب عمداً. To eat and to drink intentionally. To eat and to drink intentionally. Eating, and this is well known. Putting food in one's mouth until it goes into the stomach. Drinking likewise is well known. And he putting a drink into the mouth until it goes into, into one's stomach. This is what is intended. To do this on purpose, to put food in one's mouth and swallow it until it goes in the stomach, or to put a drink, uh, liquid, uh, in one's mouth until, and then swallow it until it goes in his stomach. This one is, I need to do that on purpose. This one breaks the fast. This one invalidates the fast. لِقَوْرِهِ تَعَالَى And this is based upon the statement of Allah the Most High. وَكُولُوا وَشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْطُ الْأَبِيَضُ مِنَ الْخَيْطُ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجْرِ ثُمَّ أَتِمُّ الصِّيَامَ إِلَى الْلَيْلِ And Allah, He says, and the, the meaning of that which is, eat and drink until the white thread of dawn is clear from the black thread. And the white thread is clear from the black thread of the dawn. And then complete the fast until... Until the night time. And then complete the fast until the night time. So the evidence is clear. وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا Eat and drink. And eat and drink until this, the, the dawn is clear. Until the, until the fajr is clear. And then from that time, you, you cannot eat or drink anymore. Until, until the, the sun set. ثُمَّ أَتِمُّ السِّيَامَ إِلَى اللَّيْنِ And then complete the fast and, until, until the night time. And then complete the fast until, until the night time. So they say, فَقَدْ بَيَّنَتِ الْآيَةُ أَنَّهُ لَا يُبَحُّ لِلصَّائِمِ الْأَكُلُ وَالشُّرْبُ بَعْدَ تُلُوءِ الْفَجْرِ حَتَّى اللَّيْلِ غُرُوبَ الشَّمْسِ So they said that, that this verse clarifies that it's not permissible for a fasting person to eat or drink after the rising of the fajr until the night time, meaning until the setting of, of the sun. Until the setting of the sun. أَمَّا مَنْ أَكَلَ أَوْ شَرِبَ نَاسِيًا فَسِيَامُهُ صَحِيحٌ و يَجِبُ عَلَيْهِ أَلِمْسَاكُ إِذَا تَذَكَّرَهُ 
as for the one who drank, uh, as for the one who ate or drank forgetfully, the one who's fasting, and he ate and drank forgetfully, not, on, not intentionally, then his fast is correct. And it's an obligation for him to continue fasting whenever he remembers. Whenever he remembers. Uh, whenever he remembers or he's reminded that he's fasting. And this is uh, based upon the statement of the Prophet and this is based upon the statement of the Prophet وسلم, that whoever forgot while he's fasting and he ate and drank, then let him complete his fast. In verity, it is only Allah who fed him and gave him drink. Who fed him and gave him drink. So this is another uh, hadith which is a principle with regards to this. And he did it forgetfully and not intentionally. So the person who truly forgot, he ate some food and he, however much the amount was. And then he remembered that he's fasting. And then he remembers that he's fasting, he will complete his fast. And his fast is good, alhamdulillah. And a person who is fasting, and he drinks some, some drink, regardless of the amount, a little or a lot, the whole time he forgot while he's drinking. And then he remembered, this will not harm his fast. He will complete his fast, and uh, he does not have to make up that day. And he does not have to make up that day. So this is the, the issue here. The one who forgot. Uh, so they mention, uh, but as soon as he remembered, or as soon as he's reminded, he has to cease. He, he, he has to stop. And that which has proceeded is good. If he remembered and the food is in his mouth, he will spit it out. If he remember while the food is in, the drink is in his mouth, he will, he will spit it out. But whatever occurred before he remembered is excused. And his fast is good. And his fast is good. If he remember while he is, is in his mouth, and then he swallowed after that, this one is not good. <laughs> Right, because now he swallowed intentionally while remembering, right, while remembering. So the excuse is not there. The excuse is there so long as forgetfulness is there. If one uh, remembers and the forgetfulness goes away, the excuse now is gone. So therefore, he's held accountable. So whatever is in his mouth now, at this time, he will remove it. He will remove it. He will remove it. And his fast is good, and Allah knows best. So they say, "Well, you see, do somu, wa yafsudu as somu bisaud." So they say now likewise the psalm is uh, corrupted or it is invalidated by a saud. A saud is a type of medication that they take in the nose. It's a, it's a type of medication that is taken from the nose. A medication that is taken from the nose. So likewise the fasting will be invalidated by this as well. And from everything that reaches the stomach, from everything that reaches the stomach, even if it's from other than the mouth, even if it's from other than the mouth, uh, and it has the same ruling as eating and drinking, uh, like the, the, the shots or the injections that have nourishment, like the injections that have, that have nourishment. So they are mentioning a, a, a number of affairs here, and uh, we have seen that uh, eating and drinking, this is clear. And this is something that's agreed upon, eating and drinking, and likewise sexual intercourse. All of these affairs are agreed upon, and that they break the fast. And the reality of eating and drinking is to put food or drink in the mouth and swallow it until it goes in into the stomach. And this is in the mouth. But likewise, what is inclu included in that as well, and the mouth is the place for the food and, and the drink to go. But also the nose is considered here. The nose also is considered here. And this is because the Prophet wasallam he told, that you should uh, do the istinshaq very well. Meaning whenever one's making the wudu, that he would draw the water into his nose, high into his nose. istinshaq is to put the water into the nose when making wudu and to bring it out. And to bring it out. So the Prophet وسلم, he ordered to do that in a good manner. To, to bring the water high up into the nose. Except whenever you're fasting. Except whenever you're fasting. And then the, case, you know, the exception in the case of fasting is because it could go up into the nose and down the throat. And down the throat. So therefore the people of Nalaz, they mentioned that likewise. Uh, the nose is also an avenue to, to the stomach. And if, so the food or drink 
that were, were to go through the nose or the nourishment or the medication and the likes. If we're to go through the nose and then down the throat, likewise it will break the fast. It will break the fast. So a believer who will avoid that. So putting food and drinking to the mouth, or even if something goes through the nose likewise, it will it will break the fast. It will break the fast. Likewise, injections. They're mentioning here injections that have the same understanding or reality as as eating and drinking. As eating and drinking, meaning they have nourishment. Meaning they have nourishment. That uh, these likewise will break the fast. Some people maybe they will be they will have injections and they will not be able to eat. And he put food in their mouth and the likes, but the, the injections ha are nutritious and they will live off of that. They'll live off of that in place of, uh, of eating and, and drinking. So therefore these things, they will break the fast. These things, they will break the fast. Allah knows best uh, anything that goes into, into the stomach, you will break the fast, even if it has no nourishment. If a person were to swallow anything intentionally, it, will, it would break the fast, whether it has nourishment or not. And the people of knowledge, they differ, they differ with regards to illatu at tafsir. What is the wisdom or the purpose of breaking the fast? Or what is the reality of the thing that actually breaks the fast? Is it food and drink only? Or is it nourishment? Or is it something going into the stomach? Crossing, passing the throat, going into the stomach. Allah, Allah knows best this is the case. Something going into the stomach. So, so if a person, for example, he were to eat dirt. He were to eat dirt. This will break his fast. Dirt is not nourishment. Dirt is not nourishment. But if, if a person to eat dirt, what do they, they say that he's doing? Eating dirt. فَقُولُوا وَشْرَبُوا Eat and drink. And he, so this is considered eating. And even though it's not nourishment, he considered it, that he ate dirt. So the person who ate dirt intentionally, this will break his fast. This will break his fast. The person who drank something that, that is not nourishing. For example, someone who drank something like gasoline, for example. No, no doubt this would harm him. This is not nourishment. But if he drank these things, if by putting it down his throat into his stomach, it breaks his fast. It breaks his fast. So regardless whether it was uh, nourishing or not nourishing, it will break his fast. And this is uh, one of the, the positions of the people of knowledge. Wallahu Adam, this is the best. And if it happened intentionally, if it happened intentionally, and that person, he swallowed something intentionally, it will break it will break his fast, whether it, nourish, it was nourishing or not. Likewise, the shots. The people of knowledge, they mention about this, those who have this position, like Sheikh Suleiman al Ruhayri, they mention that the shots uh, that are nourishing, no doubt, this will break the fast. But likewise, a shot that goes into the arm, if it's a type of shot that they put it into the arm or into the muscle, and then the body soaks up the injection, soaks up the, that which is in the, in the, in the, in the, in the injection, any of the substance, until it goes into the stomach, likewise, this would break the fast. As for a shot that goes into the body and it stays in that place, like a local anesthetic, and the likes like this, but for example, a, a dentist, he'll, he will inject, uh, sometimes I give a shot in the, in the tooth or in the gum, and uh, it will numb that place only. And the medication will stay in that place only. It will not go to the rest of the body. This one will not break the fast. This, this type of injection will not break the fast. If it's an injection that goes in the body and stays in that place, where the injection is in that place, it doesn't break the fast. As for if it went in the body and then the body soaked up that, that, that which was in the injection, and, the, and eventually that goes into the stomach, then Allah knows best, uh, Shaykh Suleiman, he mentioned this would break the fast. So a believer, he would avoid these things in the daytime of Ramadan, if he's doubtful. If it is an injection that has nourishment, inshallah, the, this one is clear. It would break the fast. Uh, if it didn't have uh, uh, nourishment, but he's not uh, sure about it, whether it's going to stay in that place or whether it moves to the body and the body soaks it up until it comes into his bloodstream or goes into his stomach and the likes like this, then yani, I believe he will avoid this if he can. And he will not take a shot in the daytime uh, of Ramadan. Whether he will postpone that till the nighttime, till the nighttime. Or if he had yani, fallen into this particular issue or he was tried by this, then he will seek uh, advice from from uh, someone he trusts in their, in their religion, in their knowledge, and in their manners, and he will get a specific ruling for his specific case. And he will get a specific ruling for a specific case. So in general, anyone, he will avoid these uh, shots and the likes like this. Uh, and, uh, and, Allah, and Allah knows best. And Allah knows best. There are a number of mufatirat, uh, they mentioned them, inshallah, we close with that. هذا وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم